Welcome everybody to Keyword Crypto. This is Mike. I am going to talk about ethics and morality today. Happy, happy, joy, joy. I'm sure you're all going to like just love, love sitting in front of a soapbox. No, but I think it's important. Um, a buddy of mine always jokes around that I'm the conscience of crypto, but I'm the conscious of me. I just, <laughs> I just have no, uh, uh, I have no way of stopping myself from talking. So I just say it out loud. <laughs> um, so what's up with what's up with morality? What's up with ethics? I know everyone's going to be like, "Fuck that! I'm a degen. I don't care. I'm here to make money." Um, that's okay, dude. You know, you're, you're the one that's going to be eating lead paint chips and your kids are going to be drinking fucking poison water. That's cool. It's all good. As long as you made your money, (laughs) as long as you don't mind your kid dying, uh, 20 years before you do, uh, because you didn't do anything to, you know, make their world better. Uh, I'm sure that money helped. I'm sure I'm sure uh I'm sure they're happy that they're dying younger because you made that extra fucking uh degen play and made like, you know, half an extra ETH. Whatever. Cool. You do you. Um you know, it's something that you have to think about. It's not look, like, not you, but like I have to care about it. I have to care about me. I have to care about ethics. I have to care about the stuff that I'm putting out to the planet. Um because at the end of the day, it's that whole thing of like, complain all you want, but if you're not the one actually trying to make a difference, then fuck you. Why are you complaining? It's like, it's it's a total American thing to complain about something that they helped create. That you know, it, And the rest of the world just kind of laughs at us at that point because it's like, we're a very whiny country. And, you know, it's kind of like that that frog in a pot of boiling water. But instead of sitting there um, letting letting the, the water boil and just cook you to death, we're the ones just like screaming and yelling, <laughs> arms hanging over the side in our hot tub as it's cooking us to death, complaining about the heat, and then not actually just climbing out and turning the heat down. It's literally that fucking dumb. <laughs> like this is the this is what we've created for ourselves. And that's just it. It's really fucking easy. All we have to do is climb out of the pot. It's not like there's no lid on it. It's not like it's not like we're treading water. We're literally sitting on the bottom of the pot like we're in a hot tub. All we have to do is sta- stand up, step over the edge, turn down the heat. But apparently that's too hard for some people because like I said, Americans are a whiny lot. We like to complain. So there's just been a bunch of stuff going on in the last week or two, and I have a lot written down that I want to talk about because it got me, you know, questioning myself. It got me questioning the purpose of keyword crypto. It got me questioning um, cryptocurrency in general, um, my participation in cryptocurrency, my participation in trading, my participation in degenerate trading, essentially gambling. Um, and I had a, like, you know, I I had a, a, a deep sit down with myself, you know, looking in the mirror and saying like, like what, what part of it am I choosing to rationalize away so I can continue to do it? And what part is actually okay? Um, because I think it's important. I think it's important to always sit down with yourself. If you're ever uncomfortable, it's always good to sit down and just think about it for a few minutes. Because if you're feeling uncomfortable, that's a, that's a, you know, when I used to teach acting when I was in grad school, um, there's all these theories that there's all these different emotions, you know, like humans have like seven different emotions or 14 different emotions or two. And I think that's all bullshit. I think it all boils down to two sensations, pleasure and pain. And that's all we really have. And everything 
is just a variation of one of those two things. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, you're feeling a, a, a form of pain. Uncomfortable is very, very mild pain that forces you to just move a little bit or to think a little bit more. It's just, it's very subtle. Like on, this, on a scale of one to 10, it would be like 0 0.01 pain. So it's not, you're not like, ow, it hurts. But like, ow, my, my soul hurts. And, I've, and, and we're not taught in this country to actually listen to our soul or our heart or our spirit or whatever it is. But there's something there that we can't see that makes us as human beings react emotionally to something that we do that doesn't directly affect us, right? So I do something to somebody else. It doesn't directly hurt me physically, but then, we, but then I go home and I think about it and I don't like the feelings that I have. That's our morality. That's our conscious. That's that whatever we, you know, the, the universe or God or, or, or our spirit or heart, or heart whatever. That's... That's us talking to ourselves. And a lot of people will rationalize that away because they don't want to listen to that. They don't want to think about what's making them feel bad because they realize it may be them that's making them feel bad. And that hurts even worse. But the great thing about that is that's like ripping off a Band-Aid. It hurts for a little bit, but then once... Once we become aware of that, we don't do that anymore. We learn, we grow up, you know, we stop throwing, you know, rocks at people because we realize, oh, I don't like it when people throw rocks at me. You know, all this stuff that we learn when we're in third grade, that for whatever reason, a lot of us just choose to not think about when we get older because it stops us from making a lot of money and you know I've been watching I've been listening to some documentaries I've been watching some documentaries and a couple of people in the telegram group were like oh documentaries are just fucking stupid they're like you know they're fucking we're like f what failed directors do instead it you know and then I just you know they're just trying to make people feel bad about themselves and I'm like if that's what you think documentaries are about I hate to break it to you Documentarians are just teachers. They're just holding up a mirror about the truth of what happened. And if it makes you feel bad, then it's because you feel bad. It's not their fault. You know, they're just telling you, like, if I tell you that a guy walked across the street and you start to feel bad, that's not my fault. <laughs> That's that's your fault. You feel bad about that for some reason. You know? It's they're just literally just telling you what happened. And it's your responsibility to emotionally deal with that. So this kind of started last week. Somebody in, in one of the telegram groups I'm in linked a, a Balaji interview with Tim Ferris. And I don't listen to Tim Ferriss just because his, I don't know why, I just never, you know, four hour work week or whatever, or four hour, I, that kind of stuff, that stuff always kind of feels like a band aid to me as opposed to just like doing the real work. But granted, I've never actually read his stuff. So that's just me being judgmental and projecting. And, you know, and I realize that. So I, so I listen to it. Um, you know, it's long. It's like a couple hours long, like two and a half hours long. Um, and I, it started to make me question my role as a podcaster. Like, am I a journalist? Is it my responsibility to hold people accountable for what they say on my podcast? Should I allow people to disseminate misinformation on my podcast? Or is it my job to push back 
and make sure that my my audience knows that what that person just said is not factually true. Because, you know, the whole reason why this podcast got started was to talk about cryptocurrency. And then it evolved into protecting friends from scams, you know, helping people learn from our mistakes, um, being honest about our mistakes. And, and I took a lot of issue with Tim Ferriss and, and his style of podcasting. And it made me realize I don't want to do that because I felt like if you listen to that interview, Balaji, uh, uh, Balaji says, uh, I don't, I gotta say Balaji's name, right? Balaji, um, says a bunch of things and, and then turns to, t- or, you know, they're, they're doing a zoom thing and he goes, do you know what that is? And Tim's like, I don't. And then Balaji explains it to him. And my issue with that is Balaji could be saying like, you know, frogs eat rhinos for dinner. And because Tim isn't familiar with it, he could be like, oh, okay. You know, and just kind of take Balaji's word for it. And he was doing that a lot. And there's a lot of things that Balaji was like totally wrong about. And I don't know if it's because I like that's the thing. I don't know anything about Balaji. So I'm not, I, and I'm not going to make any assumptions until I, do, until I do more research or maybe reach out to him and try to get him on the show or, or whatever. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or if he's just actually um, miseducated in some way, and just and 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 is getting information from people who have agendas, or if, I don't know if he has an agenda or whatever. So it it kind of it got on my nerves because you know after forty five minutes he'd already done it like three times, and Tim Ferriss was just letting everything go on. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, I have I done that? And then I realized, oh, I did do that a couple times. There were a couple people on the show who have not just differing opinions than I do, because I don't mind. You know, like me and Joe, me and Joe, me and Mario, we have different opinions about stuff, but I don't feel like morally or ethically I'm different than either of those guys. Like we have on a fundamental level, I feel like both Mario and Joe are are moral human beings who care about humanity. Now, are do I think they've made some mistakes? Absolutely. Do they probably think I've made some mistakes? More than likely. But those two guys are perfect examples of people who, and, and also Mike in space. Those three guys are perfect examples of people that I disagree with a lot about Bitcoin, but still feel like fundamentally I respect them as human beings, as moral and ethical people. And, and I'm realizing more and more like that's the kind of stuff I want to have on the show. Um. So what did what did Balaji say? Just just so, so if you're listening to it, you can know. Oh, that 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 made Michael go fucking crazy. Um, Balaji said there's a there's this there's this uh, thing that he heard of that people live by. It's called win and help win and help win. So win at something and then help other people win after that. And. There's a fundamental issue with that because to win, somebody else has to lose, right? They don't, you don't have five winners in a five man race or a five person race. You have one winner and four losers. And this idea, this notion of win and help win is something Anon talks about that I've talked about in the past um, where he says, you know, a lot of these people who are winners in our society, you know, quote unquote, just because they're financially 
more successful than the rest of us. One, by stepping on the necks of others. And some of the other people were talking about it in a, in a Telegram group I'm in, and they were like, oh, it's just so like crab in a bucket thing. It is. I mean, like for one crab to get out, you got to step on everybody else to, and then be like, oh, well, you know, and then reach down and help people out. Okay, if you're if if that's the goal, but if you but if you're stepping on people and killing them along the way, turning around and reaching down and helping them out, like lifting their corpses out, it it's not helpful. But if you're working together with those people, you know, if Jeff Bezos is working with with uh with poor people, to help enrich himself and then he turns around and then rebuilds their neighborhood, sure. But Jeff Bezos isn't doing that. Jeff Bezos is stepping on the necks of every single person, crushing their their will to live, making them pee in bottles and shit in bags so he can make an extra $90 billion in the last year. So this idea of, of win and help win is a nice turn of phrase created by rich people to rationalize hurting poor people. When, as Anand said, just do less harm. Because you have all these rich people go out and have these summits of like, how do we help poor people? Well, you help poor people by, by doing less harm to them in the beginning. You don't harm them and then turn around and say, how can we help you? Uh, you can help me by stop fucking harming me in the first place. Learn that what you did was wrong and stop doing it. Don't keep doing it. And, and why am I talking about all this? Like, why am I getting in this soapbox and talking about morality? Well, we're dealing with a new paradigm shift in cryptocurrency that was created amongst political strife. Bitcoin is a revolution. And if you don't understand that, and if you're just there for the lols or there to, to make money or there for number go up, you don't understand anything about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is, is supposed to be the great equalizer. And what I'm afraid is happening is just a complete hypocrisy and just a Frankenstein of what the original vision of cryptocurrency was supposed to be. You know, and, and it's great to say like, oh, we're Anons or this or that. But at the end of the day, Anons fought back. And if you're not actually fighting back, then you're not Anon. You're the evil person that the Anons were fighting. So what else did Balaji say? Uh, Balaji said, he's talking about like uh, Chinese versus um I forget where he is, where he is, like Singapore or something like that, um, versus Americans. And he said, and I, I could not believe he said this. He goes, Americans don't have good work, work ethic. He goes, that's why a lot of people are going over to, the, to, to Asia. He goes, because Asians will work, you know, 30 hours a day and don't take vacations. And Americans just don't have good work ethic. And I said this to a friend of mine, and he goes, well, it's kind of right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> All you need to do is go online and look at productivity per capita. So not productivity by country, because China's three times our size, so obviously they're going to be more productive than we are. You got to break it down by pro- productivity per capita, per person. How productive is each person in your country? So out of the top 10, America ranks number six. As they were the sixth most productive country on the planet per capita. And then when you dig down into, the, into more details, the average hour worked is something like 32 or 33 out of the, out of the, the top nine other countries. And we're like at... 59 or something like that on average we we work 10 hours more than um all the other countries we work more hours than the five countries who are more productive than us 
and and produce less per person. I mean, that's crazy. So if you want to say that we don't have good work ethic, I would say that's just wrong. Um, if you want to say we're not smart with how we work, I would say absolutely. But then it comes back down to like the whole way to oppress people is to overwork them so they're too tired to fight back. And then you keep lowering their pay and they have to work more and more and more and more. I mean, how, some people work two jobs and you know work two jobs a day, two shifts a day. Um, it's crazy what, what the, what the um, working class and middle class of this country do just to survive. This isn't by accident. This is what wealthy people, this is what the 1% do on purpose. I mean, just read the news. Follow any, follow anything. Just, just you know, don't even read the news because most of that is just reporting. You know, follow some journalists who are actually giving you data sets. You know, wh- uh, CEO uh, income increases over the last 10 years versus average worker increase. So the average worker increased like 2%. The average CEO increased 17,000% over the last 10 years. Now, are CEOs doing 17,000% more work over the last 10 years? No, obviously not. So obviously there's some kind of pay disparity there and they're doing it on purpose. So like... These are things that you have that you like, these are things that cryptocurrency is actually, people are actually creating cryptocurrencies to try to circumvent a lot of this stuff, to, to, to try to like block a lot of this stuff, to try to like, um, like fix a lot of these inequities across the world. So what else did he say? He said, uh, China handled the virus better than America did. Well, of course they did. They're an authoritarian communist country that had martial lockdowns. They were literally welding doors shut in apartment buildings and not letting citizens out onto the streets. <laughs> if we did that in America, people would start shooting everybody. And, and I mean, I'm not going to say which one would be right or wrong because I, if people tried to weld me into my house and I had a gun, I'd probably shoot at them too because like that's fucking crazy. But that's the kind of country China is. So if you say like China handled something better, did they? I mean, yes, they had less virus and less virus deaths. But did they handle it better? That's, you know, that's your opinion. Okay. I'm not, you know, I... I do I think we handled it poorly because of misinformation? Yes. Do I think we handled it poorly by not locking people in their homes and welding the doors shut? No, not at all. I would never advocate for that because we live in a, you know, a a somewhat free society. And we don't do that to our citizens. We do sometimes. We do, you know. He talks about like wanting to have 100% consent in society. And I just think that that's, in society, that's physically... Um, impossible. That's like you know when Saddam Hussein, you know, says he says he won a hundred percent of the vote. It's like, okay, anytime somebody says they have a hundred percent consent, that's a huge red flag for me. Obviously, people are either lying, they're fixing something, they're stifling opinion or voice, you know, speech, um, or they're threatening. I don't ever trust somebody when they say, you know, they have 100% consent of something. And lastly, he said, immigration isn't evil. And my first thought was, immigration is absolutely evil if you get the permission of the invader and not the invaded. So in the U.S., all these immigrants who come here who have permission from the invader you know, the U.S. government, instead of getting permission from the people who were systematically murdered in a genocide, the Native Americans, 
Does that mean the person is evil? I mean, if you're running away for your life, no. But immigration itself kind of is evil in under the under that under that pretext under the under the pretext of of the history of the United States of America and that's one of those things people don't like to talk about or hear about because they like to live in a bubble and, and think that we're a nation of immigrants and you know blah 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 we're a melting pot of immigrants fuck that we're a nation of invaders of genocidal maniacs who murdered systematically murdered tens of millions of people over the course of 200 years and then brought slaves and treated them like like property and animals for 400 years i mean our the united states is built on blood and not like you know the english and the french having a battle on a battlefield no like rwanda like hitler and the jews like i mean not not pleasant systematic violence and in and inhuman actions so once again these are the things as we're using crypto as we're building crypto as we're buying crypto as as we're supporting crypto in a free market these are the things you may want to think about so i was talking with two friends in a telegram group about um everest id and this idea of like social id on on cryptocurrency blockchains is going to be a big deal we're already hearing about it um with vet with uh vaccine passports and all this type of stuff some people are freaking out some people aren't um a lot of conservatives are like you know this is un-american it's like what are you talking like what are you talking about you have to have vaccines to go visit pretty much any country on the planet you have to have vaccines to go to school in our country and you have to have you know proof that you have that you had the vaccine and i'm just thinking like if i'm a small business owner of course i'm going to want to make sure every single one of my employees is vaccinated because i don't want to have people coming in and unvaccinated people coming in and getting not only potentially other employees sick but all my customers sick potentially you know and then having lawsuits after lawsuit of them getting customers sick and then the customers suing me so if i'm running a business and i'm a smart and, I, and i'm you know a competent business owner i'm going to make sure all my all my employees are healthy but here we come back to the irrational rich person and they don't care and instead of focusing on making sure all their employees are healthy they reach out to the government and they lobby them and they say i want you to pass laws that my employees and customers can't sue me if they get sick from one of my sick employees that way I don't have to pay health insurance or sick pay to my employee. I can just say you have to work even if you're sick. And then I don't have to be held responsible if they die or they get somebody else sick or they or they get a customer sick and that customer dies. I don't want to be held responsible for my actions. So this is kind of like that that sickness that's invaded the American psyche where we encourage people to think about how to maximize profit as over how to maximize health and happiness of our fellow Americans or our fellow human beings. And these are the kind of things that hopefully cryptocurrency can help us solve. I want to get into like net income, like net outcome for Bitcoin, especially because I had something happen and I realized after the fact that I was very unhappy with the decision I made and I'm still grappling with how to deal with it. And it kind of made me think about Bitcoin in general, especially with everything going on with 
all the people freaking out about NFTs who don't really understand what NFTs are, and they just but they they associate NFTs with 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 proof of work, and they automatically associate that with Bitcoin. I I have a feeling that if you poll average Americans who have heard of the NFTs and who complain about it, they're going to think that the majority of and this is just my gut. I don't have any kind of factual evidence for this, but my gut tells me that the majority of them are going to think that NFTs have to do with Bitcoin, even though like 1% of NFTs are actually on Bitcoin. And even that might be too high. You know, I I feel like the, you know, I, 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 I I have a feeling like 99.9% of NFTs are on Ethereum, but that's just my, my gut, which, you know, like George W. Bush could absolutely be wrong most of the time. So with Bitcoin, if the net outcome is negative when we create Bitcoin, we're never going to have ethics or morality on our side, right? Like no amount of gold will make you a moral person if that gold was mined unethically by slaves, by polluting drinking water in the area that you mined it, by killing off wildlife, by, you know, destroying forests, you know, whatever happened. There is no amount of of profit you can make that will make it moral or ethical. And I keep screaming from the rooftops about this because I don't think Bitcoiners understand. And it makes me realize that a lot of Bitcoiners are wildly uneducated about the world. Just unbelievably uneducated. And I came across a great quote that said... (laughs) um, you're disturbingly confident in your ignorance. And when I heard that quote, all I could think about was Bitcoin maximalists. They are disturbingly confident in their ignorance. And they will use rational, like they will rationalize everything so they don't have to acknowledge that they're immoral people by supporting something that's being created through unethical and immoral and immoral things, you know, pumping CO2 into the air. And people say, well, you know, we're using a lot of clean energy. Uh, no, you're not. The vast majority of Bitcoin is not created with clean energy. They say, oh, you know, look at, look at China. It's all, it's all uh, hydroelectric. Okay, well, Hi, you know, we talked about this with not not so fast. Hydroelectric is disastrous for the ecosystem. You take a stream that animals move up and down every single day on, and then you put a big fucking wall, and you don't allow any water flow. So anything that's that needs to go upstream to repopulate salmon runs or, you know, uh, like wolves that need to go hunt, you know, they you can't get over that gigantic like two hundred foot dam. So you're destroying ecosystems with hydroelectric. Those guys who are using um, gas burnoff with uh, in oil fields, are they producing more CO two to to mine their Bitcoin? No, and that's a great first step. But what they are doing is they're extending the life of oil mines or of, of uh, oil rigs because once those rigs become economically uh, infeasible because the price of oil is so low or the price of natural gas is so low, they would shut it down and just move on. And we've seen it happen. I worked in the oil fields. Within one week, every single person I knew was out of a job because the price of oil tanked in twenty. 12 i believe and and they were doing documentaries on north dakota all these people who were working in the oil fields making tons of money they all got laid off they didn't have any money left over and they were all stuck in north dakota entire towns of people just stuck with no job 
and no way to get out of it. Like no, like they didn't even have money for like a bus. And then they didn't have anywhere to go because they didn't have any money. So they couldn't like, you're going to go back to where you came from, even though you don't have any money. Like, how are you going to live? Like try to live on someone's couch? Maybe. Okay. But like, it was crazy. So what Bitcoin is doing is it's allowing those oil rigs to keep pumping even though they're even though they're not financially viable anymore because you know maybe they're charging or maybe they're getting a percentage of the bitcoin or maybe they're doing whatever or like so i don't know i i need to look into that and i'm going to be up front i don't know if the people who are mining bitcoin on that uh burn off gas are giving a kickback to um oil rigs if i owned an oil rig and, and a bitcoin or said i could Asked me if I could do that, I'd be like, sure, I'm getting 20, I want 20%. I think it'd be completely irrational to expect a business owner to let somebody use a part of their business for free without getting anything in return. So, just as somebody you know who thinks about business, I would assume that they're getting something in return. And that just allows them to stay financially viable just a little bit longer and keep producing a little you know more co2 and more co2 for longer so whereas it would normally shut down in a year because money ran out that that kickback from the bitcoin is is extending it for another like four or five years so that's not good for the planet and it's and it's slowing the rate of evolution in this in technology and in the space and in the in the move to clean energy so there's little things like that where it's just like what's what's the long term harm sure i'm making a little bit of money and i'm doing it for cheap but am i but you know i'm actually harming the planet in the process and you know like i said if the net income is negative when we create this bitcoin it's not moral or ethical and more as more and more people become aware of this, they're going to hate cryptocurrency and hate Bitcoin. And it's going to make it that much harder for the entire space to succeed. Because that's the new thing. All the like Trolly McTrollface and all those guys on Twitter, this is this is their new angle. This they're they're doubling down on this, hammering it home. And they keep linking cryptocurrency with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is Bitcoin over and over and over and over again. And as somebody who doesn't defend Bitcoin, I have to say, hey, Bitcoin does not equal cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency does not equal Bitcoin. And my response is like, that's like, you know, lumping old Hummers in with new electric cars and saying all cars are bad. It's hurting the whole ecosystem. The whole cryptocurrency space is being damaged by this. So if you claim to care about cryptocurrency and then you advocate for unlimited ASIC mining at at any expense, no matter how damaging to the environment it is, you're only hurting yourself in the long run because you're damaging the entire cryptocurrency space. You're making it harder for us to convince people that there are some really good projects out there that are trying to make a difference and trying to help humanity. And it's hard enough because of how many scams there are and how many rug pulls. So, you know, we really have to work as a team and think about what's good for me is good for cryptocurrency. And ask yourself, is this good for cryptocurrency? Not just my project. Because this idea of like, I'm going to win... If you think your cryptocurrency is going to win, that means that subconsciously you think that it's going to shut down all the other cryptocurrencies. And that's just idiotic at this point. <laughs> all these maximalists who think that they're going to somehow like cancel Ethereum and one day it's just going to magically shut down because Bitcoin won. I mean, these people are delusional, like actually delusional. And either they believe it or it's all an act and they're doing it just to FUD Ethereum and all these other projects. So as, as a listener of the show, just realize when you're hearing this stuff, 
you know, there aren't that many options. Either the person is not a rational human being or they're systematically trying to hurt the entire space, not realizing it's also going to hurt crypto, you know, going to hurt their project in the long run. And that's just it. Like, this is what irrational people do. I mean, Jeff Bezos even said eventually his company is going to go bankrupt. Eventually, Amazon's going to go bankrupt because somebody's going to figure out how to do it better. But he thinks it's better from a financially viable way. But what's going to happen is eventually people are going to revolt and people are just going to stop using Amazon. And that's the reason why. Somebody's not going to come up with a better way of having that service. They're going to have a better way of providing bathrooms for their employees. And there's going to be a tipping point, and they say, and we're going to we're going to be confronted with: Do I want to shop at Amazon, where employees die on the floor, pee in bottles, and shit in bags, or do I want to pay ten percent more? And shop at a place where the person gets a lunch break and a 15-minute break every four hours and vacation pay and a bathroom to use. Because the first company that comes along that, that can even somewhat rival Amazon and provide those benefits for their employees is going to eat Amazon's cake. And we know this because that's the history of humanity. People want better work environments. People want better living environments. And a lot of times they're willing to sacrifice a small amount of money to have a better environment. Just, you know. Or they take the worse environment and then within a few years they start to fight back and ask for a better environment. The other thing it made me think about is There's two types of people in the cryptocurrency space, more or less, builders. Two types of builders in the space. And one is a a Bitcoiner, and one is, I'm going to use Nano, one's a Nano person. And then, so there's going to be variations. So if you have like Bitcoins on one extreme, on one end of the extreme, Nano's on the other 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 end of the extreme, and everyone's kind of somewhere in between there. And you you got to kind of pick who you want to be. So Bitcoiners create something that's bad for the world, that physically damages the world, and then rationalize that by saying, we're actually helping the world by creating hard money. All this mining is good for the planet. All this destruction that we're causing is actually good for the planet because what we're creating is is good for the planet. And that's just bullshit because... If Bitcoin went away tomorrow, everyone would just switch over to something else. You know, Bitcoiners say it's the most sound money. Well, it's the long, it's the oldest cryptocurrency. I would hope it'd be the most sound money, but eventually, it's not going to be the most sound money. And like I said, if it shut down tomorrow, everyone would move over and, and decide what they wanted the most sound money to be, and they would put all their energy and money into that. And then that would eventually become the most sound money. So it's not like systematically better. It's just that, you know, first to market type thing. But eventually first to market always loses. And every single financial system, every single industry, the first to market always gets overtaken eventually. And the fact that a lot of maximalists don't want to acknowledge this fact or think that this time it's going to be different. That's like an abused girlfriend (laughs) saying that I'm going to go back to my boyfriend because this time it's going to be different. And then they just get punched again. And you know, it's like, so that's, that's kind of how I feel about maximalists. So, Maximalists damage the planet and then say it's somebody else's problem to fix. Well, all people need to, you know, it's not our fault people are using coal to, to, you know, 
to, to create the energy that they use to mine Bitcoin. It's not our fault. They can do whatever they want. Bitcoin's just code. We're just putting it out in the world. It's everyone else's responsibility to be moral. It's not our responsibility to be moral. And people say, well, it's code. It can't be moral or, or unethical. It, it fucking absolutely can be moral and, and ethical. We have code that has been proven to be prejudicial when creating, um, when prisoners are up for uh, parole or like applying for parole. They, the, the, the code would say, well, they, they're going back to this neighborhood and people in that neighborhood have a higher recidivism recidivism rate so that person shouldn't get paroled and this person is going back to this neighborhood and they don't have a, a high recidivism rate and lo and behold the neighborhood with the higher recidivism rate, recidivism rate just happens to be black so they don't parole black people and they parole white people and california has been dealing with this with with uh their system of bail and they what they and they black people in and brown people in the state actually voted against it because getting rid of bail because the proposed rule that was going to replace it was even more prejudicial against black and brown people. It had the potential to be even worse than bail. And bail is fundamentally one of the most prejudicial things in this country, more or less created to keep black and brown people in prison as opposed to letting them leave like white people get to. Um, so Bitcoiners create something, put it in the world and say, it's your job to be moral. It's not our job. With the code. And then you have somebody like Nano and Nano says, these are the moral and ethical dilemmas that Bitcoin chose to ignore. We're going to create code trying to solve those problems. And then they put that in the world. So they're examining the good and the bad, the moral, the unethical, the moral, the immoral, the ethical, the unethical. And they say, we don't want to put immoral stuff out there. Like that's their goal. Now, when I talked to Colin, I said, well, fix supply benefits the people who get in early which is kind of immoral but you know he has the belief that that won't happen and I said okay well as long as you know that this is an experiment he says yes absolutely it's an experiment and I know this I said okay so that's great so this is like a, this is a scientific experiment people don't have to rely on nano People aren't going to go hungry because of the price of nano. So in this situation, there is literally zero harm in this experiment because it's not causing, you know, it's not causing pollution. It's not, you know, doing any of these things. It's, it's, it's clean, it's green, and it's, it's, it's attempting to solve problems that Bitcoin can't solve. And they're putting it out there and saying this is the experiment. Like that's an ethical experiment. Because you're not hurting people in the process. And you're putting it into the same environment as, as Bitcoin. And saying like, okay, well, you know, traders are going to trade. Just like in Bitcoin. And let's see how the experiment works. So you got to ask yourself, where are you on that, on that spectrum? Do you want to invest in things that don't care about the harm that they create, that it creates? Or do you want to invest in things that actually are trying to solve ethical and immoral and, and moral problems? Like working to actually try to make things better without hurting things in the, pro without hurting people in the process. So like Bitcoiners are like the 1% who hurt a bunch of people just to get rich and then turn around and say, now how can we help you? Whereas the nano people, 
And I'm just picking these two randomly just because they are so polar extreme on the opposites um, on the spectrum. The nano people say, these are the problems. What can we do to help you? If we get wealthy in the process, great. So I don't think win and then help other win- others win is possible. We've, I, we've never actually seen it succeed in the world. Because anytime you have a billionaire, you got, it, it's physically impossible to become a billionaire without denying other people human rights. It's physically impossible. It's just, you know, if somebody would have to work like 257 million hours to achieve your wealth, then you're obviously not paying that person enough. Especially when you've gotten, you know, a a 29,000% raise and they got a 1% raise and they're the one doing all the work, all the hard work, physically hard work. So nano shows and projects like that, that are choosing to work with people to solve problems and then try to build wealth that way versus hurting people, making your money, and then trying to help them you know, recover from the, the harm that you caused. It shows that we can have ethically sound cryptocurrency that actually makes a difference and, and works to make a difference in our society. And you can make money off of that. If you're not a builder, you can absolutely make money off of that. And we've seen that in society over the last, the shift over the last 20 years. There's been a big push into clean energy, green energy, right? 15 years ago, it was next to impossible. There was no such thing as a a clean energy ETF. And now they make up like 6% of of, uh, stocks, that, that you can invest in. That's crazy. And they're, and they're going up at like 1% or 2% a year. More and more clean energy stocks and ETFs and mutual funds that are like solely based in, in, in clean energy. And, and that's a pretty big shift. And that's a mindset of society shifting over and putting their money and investing in projects that are healthy for the planet that help fix the planet, that help fix the problems that all these rich people from the last hundred years created. People don't want to invest in those types of people. You know, so pretty much every country outside of America has something called polluter pay, where the people who create the pollution have to clean up the pollution. America is like the only country that doesn't do that. So America are like Bitcoiners. They create the problem and they say, it's your job to fix it. Whereas Europeans, European countries are like nano. They're like, okay, well, if we're going to do something bad, we got to make sure that in the process, we're not hurting people. So do we want to actually do this? And then maybe we should sit down and talk to people and say, you know, is this something we want to actually do? It's going to cause this little bit of harm, but in the process, we can fix it retroactively immediately so hopefully it won't cause any actual harm to people right it's 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 looking in the mirror and saying what kind of person do i want to be do i want to be a moral person an ethical person or do i want to be somebody who just doesn't give a shit about anybody else because at the end of the day like those american rich people have to live in this country too and you can only hide yourself away from from toxic air and toxic water for so long eventually it's going to reach you and then they're going to say, and then their kids are going to be like, why the fuck did you do that? They're like, well, we have all this money. Yeah, but my kid, you know, like our kids just died from asthma or whatever. They had an asthma attack and we didn't have our inhaler and they fucking died. So, you know, it's, we got to think about this as, as people in the cryptocurrency space. So that's kind of the, the hypocrisy that I get frustrated with. You know, it, it kind of, it, the, I, I've been hearing people say like, oh, you know, Keep politics out of cryptocurrency. I'm in this Telegram group, and I love it. But somebody said something, and they're probably listening. So I, I, 
friends are going to rub people, rub each other wrong, rub each other the wrong way. Sometimes they were like something about like politics and it's so easy to just be like cut and dry and blah, blah. And, 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 uh, and, and state something as fact when there's lots of shades of gray. And we were talking about white supremacy at the time. And I was like, um, there really is no, I mean, I guess technically, if you want to think there's shades of gray and white supremacy, great. But when you're hosting dinners for Proud Boys, I'm sorry. You're you're more or less acknowledging that you're a white supremacist. You know, if you're funding Trump and, and hosting Proud Boys and, and, you know, doing everything you possibly can to to fight for monopolies in this country that mainly hurt lower class people, financially lower class people, which are mainly people of color in this country. You know, we just got to call a spade a spade. And I know people like are, are so, especially conservatives, they're so uptight and like, and like whiny about, don't call me names, bro. Don't want to be called the white supremacist. Don't be a fucking white supremacist. You know, learn, be a better person. You know who I don't call white supremacist? People who don't act like white supremacists. <laughs> People who don't host Proud Boys for dinner. As I said earlier, like cryptocurrency was born out of political strife. Occupy Wall Street, you know, consumer debt running wild, credit card debt, student loan debt, you know, runaway budgets, runaway deficits. People were frustrated about this because it was directly affecting them. And this is where cryptocurrency, this is what it was born out of. It was born out of the ashes of Occupy Wall Street. And it had been, it had been happening before then. People have been working on it for a while, but it's like, it's just kind of like weird synchronicity of events. And so, you know, you can say, well, it didn't actually happen from, wasn't, it wasn't from Occupy Wall Street. But it's, it, you know, there's something called kismet, which is like the universe is kind of magically falling together to make something happen. So people have been working on, on you know, solving a truly decentralized cryptocurrency, and it just happened. Somebody just happened to figure out how to do it, just as Occupy Wall Street was in the world's psyche. It could have just been mere coincidence. It could have been kismet, whatever. But at the end of the day. Bitcoin was and is and all cryptocurrency is technically a revolution. We're trying to change the way things were because they were immoral and unethical. And they were harming a lot of people. And a lot of people were tired of participating in the in the system that harms people. Because a lot of us don't want to make money off of you know child slavery in China. And we don't have to get rid of our iPhones. We just, as one, we unify together using the system of the free market. And we say, Apple, we are no longer going to buy your products if you continue to allow child child labor in China in your factories. That's it. We're just going to go to somebody else who, who won't tolerate that. And lo and behold... Apple pretty quickly went in, you know, when all these people were killing themselves in Apple factories at Foxconn and all that were jumping off, off the buildings because they were working too hard and, you know, were essentially like certain servitude to, to Foxconn, you know, a few well-placed news articles enlightened the world to where their iPhones were coming from and people felt sick to their stomach and enough people looked at themselves in the mirror and said, I want to be a moral person and it's unethical for me to support this company. And so they reached out and they told Apple. And Apple is, and Apple, you know, started making changes. And then every other, and then every single human being is going to decide what amount of work needs to be done by Apple for them to now rationalize using an Apple product. And that's it. Every single person is going to rationalize in their own way. Okay, you've done X, Y, and Z. Now my conscious is clean. Is, is clean. Feels okay. I don't feel sick when I look in the mirror anymore because you did X, Y, and Z. 
And that's going to be different for every single human being. There's no right or wrong because you're the one who has to look at yourself in the mirror. I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror. So part of it is, for me, they made a bunch of changes and I buy a new iPhone every four or five years. I, you know, use it as long as I possibly can. My last laptop was an Apple laptop. It lasted me eight and a half years. And I bought it used at, and I, and I bought it used. I bought it used and it lasted me eight and a half years. So that's how I rationalize supporting Apple. They've done just enough for me to feel okay. And then I don't add to the consumption. You know, back to crypto, this is what we have to do. This is a free market. You have a choice. You are the consumer. If you are buying and trading crypto, you are the consumer. Use your voice. Don't be afraid. Who cares if somebody calls you a snowflake or whatever, or whiny, whatever. It is your money. Fuck anybody who tells you what you can and can't say when it comes to your money. Look at yourself in the mirror and saying, and, and ask yourself, what do you feel comfortable with? Ask, like, I, I ask myself, what companies do I feel comfortable with? Because I'm in this telegram, I'm in a couple different telegram groups, and I get some fucking things that I do not feel comfortable about, and I don't buy them. And then they do a 100x, and I was like, uh, nope, I don't care. I'd rather make 20x and invest in something that I feel good about humanity wise but you have the power at the end of the day you have the power don't be afraid to use that power don't just go where the sheep go just so you can make you know an extra 10x or 20x and then all of a sudden find out that the thing you invested in is now while why you're in jail because you invested in something that turned out to prove that you were breaking the law. And now you're in jail because of it. I mean, maybe don't break the law, but you know what? But something like that. Or like, what is what what are your moral and ethical standards? And do you feel good about it? Which comes to my last point is trading. So I remember having Richard Hart on. We had Richard Hart on, and he would say, like, trading's immoral, it's unethical. And I think because at one point he made a bad trade and lost a ton of money. And I, and I think he was like actually crying in the in a video. He was like live stream or something like that. And he's crying in real time because he made such a bad trade and got so screwed. And so he went on this, he went on this like soapbox journey about like trading's unethical. It's immoral because if you're selling the top, it means somebody's buying the top. And then it's going to go to zero and you're costing them all this money. And I kind of believed that for a while until I came across a friend yesterday. And I hadn't really thought about it. I didn't really give it too much thought. And then the encounter yesterday really kind of flipped that all on my head. Because he said, oh, I bought so-and-so. And I was like, what the fuck did you buy that for? First off, it's a meme coin. And second off, you bought the top. Like it's going to go to zero or it's not going to go, probably won't go to zero, but it's like, you're going to lose like 90%. He goes, that's okay. That's when I had the money and I've got a family. I've got work. I've got this. I've got that. I don't have fucking time to look at charts. I'm investing in stuff for 10 years. And it made me think of Warren Buffett, who people looked at his charts and a lot of his buys were notoriously at the top of cycles but he was still massively ahead because even though he bought the top the next top was way higher so could he have waited and bought the bottom sure did it really matter at the end of the day because the guy's a fucking billionaire no absolutely not so that's proof right there that it doesn't really matter if you buy the top or the bottom if you're going to be in it for 20 or 30 years and, it, and you've done your research and it's an actually a company that's going to stick around or a cryptocurrency that's going to stick around. So it made me realize that who am I to say when my friend can and can't buy? Who am I to say, no, you can't buy that top? 
because it's immoral. It's unethical. Because you're going to lose all your money. I'm not his fucking mom. I don't want to live in a nanny state that tells people what they can and can't do with their money. As long as it's not harming anybody else. If he feels he was harmed because he needed that money two months from now and it tanked, that's a lesson learned. He'll learn to be a better trader in the future if that's what he wants to do. But it could go to zero tomorrow and then go up to 2x of what he bought it at a year from now. So who was right? Me or him? So buying and trading, selling, that just provides liquidity in the market. And liquidity allows me to sell when I want to sell for whatever reason. Maybe I want to get out of crypto entirely. Maybe I want to buy a car. Maybe I want to buy a house. Maybe I need to pay for some doctor bills. And it just happens to be that that's the top. And I need to, I need to, I mean, I've been, I was in a car accident and I need, I've got all these medical bills and I have to sell now. And luckily it just happened to be the top. So what, like I, I, I should feel bad because somebody bought the top from me. So whether you're doing it because you're a trader or you're doing it because you actually need the money or you're doing it because you don't have time to look at charts and you just want to put some money in and not think about it for 10 years. There's nothing fundamentally morally or ethically wrong with trading. Now, if you're you're purposefully trying to manipulate the price, like being a whale, yeah, that's immoral, that's unethical. But if you're just Joe Schmo looking at charts, you're like, oh, now's a good time to buy or now's a good time to sell. You do you. Don't don't listen to people because but this so this is the thing like about morality and ethics is like we have to look at the mirror and realize what's moral and immoral for us. Richard Hart looks in the mirror and says trading is immoral. But at a certain point, Richard Hart's going to want to sell. He's going to need some money. So is he immoral? Is he going to is he going to make sure to to sell the bottom so he's not screwing somebody over? Or is he going to sell the top? If he wants to sell the bottom, great. If that's what if that's going to make him sleep better at night, who am I to judge? He's doing what's what's good for him financially and emotionally and morally. As long as he's not doing something to purposely hurt somebody else, I don't care. All I ask is that when you're thinking about what to invest in, when you're looking at a chart, when you're doing your own research, because I hope you're doing your own research, I hope you're not just listening to somebody and like jumping into something, which I am guilty of sometimes because FOMO is real. <laughs> and don't be ashamed of making mistakes because we all make mistakes. The true test of, of, of the character of a person is what do you do after that mistake? Do you just ignore it and pretend it didn't happen or do you acknowledge it and try not to do it again do you admit the mistake to the person you made the mistake to and that's a humbling experience but that's that humbling is is a is a type of pain it's un, it's it's uncomfortable uncomfortable is a type of pain and when we experience pain pain is a great thing because it teaches us how to not do something again, right? We touch fire, that's physical pain. I guess uncomfortable, like feeling humbled and embarrassed, that's physical pain. Like we're, you know, we're, we're having physical sensations in our body, you know, flushed face or embarrassed, you know, people turn red and this and that. That's, it's physical, it's a physical reaction. So it is kind of a type of physical pain, physical discomfort. Acknowledging that is good because we learn from that. We become better people. We evolve. There's a reason why we tell kids to apologize to somebody because it's, it's shaming to have to apologize to somebody. It's embarrassing to admit we were wrong. It's uncomfortable. We don't like feeling that sensation. The goal 
is hopefully the kid will learn from that painful experience, that shaming experience, and make a better decision next time so they don't have to do that again. You know, let's do that as traders. Let's do that as as builders in the space. Let's do that as investors. Let's invest morally. Let's invest ethically. Let's do research. Let's support people who are ethical and moral and who, who consciously make a decision that they don't want to cause harm for their own benefit because we have the power to do that in a free market. And cryptocurrency is like the most free market thing you can possibly imagine because nobody's relying on cryptocurrency to survive. I always say like you can't like water is not a free market because you need water to, to live. So if you allow mark if you allow the market to set the price of water, of course they're going to charge $1000 a gallon because people will pay whatever they they fucking have to to get that water just to survive. They will pay irrational amounts of money. But we don't have to do that for cryptocurrency because I can say no to every single cryptocurrency and just walk away if I want to. And it's not going to affect my life one bit outside of having fun staying poor. <laughs> so that's it. Be better people. Not what I think is better, what you think is better. I want you to look in the mirror tomorrow and, and feel that you're a better person than you were today. Like that's my goal for everybody. That's my goal for myself. I want all my friends to be like that. Like, like that's, that's, that I hang out with people who live their life that way of trying to be better tomorrow than they were today. Like I want to be around those types of people because it makes, it makes it easier for me to make better decisions when I surround myself with people who make good decisions. Try to surround yourself with people who make good decisions. Try to surround yourself with people who are just morally and ethically good people, who try, who work hard, who sacrifice to be good people. Because being good is a sacrifice sometimes. It's hard. Sometimes that, that 100x gain is very enticing. And give yourself a break when you make a mistake. Acknowledge it. But give yourself a break. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'll be the first one to admit I make a lot of mistakes. Not a lot of them. I make less mistakes now than I did when I was 20. Like that's our goal, right? We, we try to make less mistakes today than we did yesterday. I appreciate everybody who listens. I appreciate the support. I appreciate people tweeting and responding and you know the occasional tips. I really, really appreciate it. Just the acknowledgement feels good. Keep being a good person. Keep striving to be better. And let's, you know, let's start fixing things because the U.S. especially is in a really bad state. We have been sick for a long time and we've refused to get care. <laughs> and now it's coming back to bite us in the ass. So now we need to go fix things. It's like having an abscess tooth and just refusing to go to the dentist. It just got, it's keep, got worse and worse and worse, and now we have to have the tooth removed. And it's going to cost 10 times more to get the tooth removed and get, a, and get a, a fake tooth put in when we could have just gone in and had the cavity filled and spent 100 bucks or 200 bucks. But now we got to spend like $3,000. But we have to do it. And now we're at this point. So... Let's do it. Let's be better. Let's let's pick good cryptocurrencies. Let's let's support the ones that are actually trying to make a difference and and put good in the world. As hokey as that sounds. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.